But the concerned citizens ignored the board, and the picnic went as planned, complete with a symbolic tug of war over two of the monitoring wells. And June celebrated her birthday among friends. over to that field and play because it's much too far away. You're not going to let them cross the street. But the development is not without its supporters. Joyce Bridge has lived in Radburn for 17 years. She says the field is almost never used. They even offered to build a dog park and all of us said, oh, we're not getting in the car and taking our dogs over there. So what do you think you're going to do with this piece of land? Look at it? And actually it would be great. I mean, we pay taxes on that about that land there. I think it's, what, 25000 a year or something like that. Christine and Peter Andrews have raised all their kids here. They think it's a small minority that cares at all about daily fields. Everyone I know, nobody seems to care. Do you, how do you, what about you, honey? What is well, your, you at least Christine does. More, people more than I do because you're out in the park more. Well, I think more people care. I get the impression more people care about, about than you do. Uh, more people care More people about are interested, in, uh, don't want the development? Yeah. Who? Well, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> this was a concept. This is known all over the world. The community is now split on almost every detail uh, of the issue. You just don't take uh, a, a a park and open space, and 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 change it to residential. They disagree on the field's intended use. That property was to have been commercial property, industrial property. It was never designated by city housing as a ball field that's sacrosanct. And the impact the development will have on Radburn's school and facilities. The needs of the family are not best served by living between the down ramp from Route 208 and the railroad. The people it serves best would be either dinks, which are double income, no kids, young people like my daughter and her husband who just married, and not planning to have a child for a few years, uh, commute into New York, easy commute. And what happens is the schools wind up getting a lot of kids from it, and they say, oh, there's going to be no kids. We're going to have single bedrooms, you know, two, two bedrooms. We're going to have, you know, young. What happens when you get two young people together? You think sex is involved? You think anybody might come home at least Dad, drunk one night? He's videotaping us. They disagree about the effects on shock. traffic. What they're going to get is a lot of traffic. If anybody is familiar with that area, Try making a left turn in Fairlawn during commuting hours. You might as well go to New York. People live there. They go to work. They come home. They don't all go, you know, you don't have 25 cars in a traffic jam every morning trying to get in and out of their parking lots. And as you'd expect, Radburn's rules are also debated. Guidelines. You're going to torture us for, like, every window pane, every door, every screen that goes up, and the color of your house. I don't know if you know that they actually have the right to tell you not to paint your house certain colors here. You bought this house, you read the bylaws, you know, that's the way it goes, you know, you live here. And then there's the issue Somebody's of the $4 million. Dollars. Those people who are for it will say, it gives us a wonderful uh, uh, nest egg, actually. Like, it's going to be deposited in their bank account. I mean. Radburn should pay $4 million more to keep that land and where it'll go. We have no idea of how they use the money, where the money goes. What do you think we're going to do with the money? Do you think next year's board is going to be stupid and go to Atlantic City? And whether four million dollars is even enough. You know what? Are we getting the fair market value for that property? They did not have an open competitive well, bid. I, which do you want? You want open land or you want more money? Which is it you want? And now, you, now suddenly it's, do you want more money? Are you cooking something? No. To get more people on board, the CCRF distributes a regular newsletter. This one announces the borough's planning board meeting to discuss Daily Field. So the night before, June Meyerson invites members to her home for coffee and cake.
Now let's talk about briefly tomorrow, which is our big, big event. They talk about their strategies for the next day's meeting. They hope to convince the town's planning board that Daly Field should remain green. As proof that they are, in fact, uh, that it is not an abandoned piece of property that people are trying to, in fact, use it. The following evening at the planning board meeting, the group is joined by other residents of Radburn as well as Fairlawn. We don't want more cars, we don't want more congestion, and above all, we don't want another ugly development. Restrain your clapping, please. It seems every single piece of vacant land is given over to more development. And now our park, Daly Field, is on the list. When is enough enough? The Radburn trustees seem to have warehoused these properties. Ma'am, ma ma'am, you're raising questions that this board can't address because... But the planning board says it can do nothing until the developer or the association submits an application to build. I don't, I don't have one piece of paper from the Radburn Association, not one. In the meantime, we get this letter about this closed session where they're talking about swapping land and building whatever, and they know nothing about what's going on, you know. Again, all these little tentacles. So the meeting quickly becomes a venting session. We were told this was for our own good. My mother used to give me castor oil or cod liver oil when I was a kid because it was for my own good. They tasted terrible. And this information tastes even worse. And the association is reassured that the development will go as planned. Because the residents have no ownership interest in this property. It's owned by the Radburn Association. And if I had to go, or if the board had to go, to 700 families for an opinion, we'd never get anything done. You cannot conduct business in secret. Radburn is different, and I think that's the problem. People Elaine Winchell has lived in Radburn for over 30 years. She's also the president of Fairlawn's League of Women Voters. The League will conduct a study on Daly Field and advise the town's mayor and council. So on this night, Peter Courtright from the town's planning board comes to her home to discuss development. And growth is good, because if you're not growing, you're dying. But Elaine thinks the issue is bigger than Daly Field. I think the method by which the decisions are made in Radburn is something that needs to be looked at. What is the problem? It seems when there's non-disclosure that there may be something nefarious going on. I think it's natural to think that. It's all sex, lies, and videotapes, I'm telling you. The Board of Trustees should at least publish their minutes. For now, Radburn residents will continue to disagree about Daly Field. He hasn't probably stepped on Daly Field in 30 years. So you, well, you'll miss it, right? At first it seemed like this was, you know, uh, the Goliath that we were up against. And um, I think we're going to win. But whether it developed or not... We'll, we'll go down fighting it. <laughs> Try anyway. What do you think, Bob? I think you've said I, it all. I know. Enough. I In a little said. community called Radburn, things have changed. Last fall, the CCRF had one major accomplishment. They managed to get June Meyerson voted onto Radburn's Board of Trustees as the community's representative. She began her two-year term January 1st. Yeah.